You have a business idea or have already started making some sales. As someone who has been dreaming to be an entrepreneur, one of the first steps in setting up a business is to choose your business structure. You may have heard of a sole proprietorship, a partnership, and a corporation, but what exactly is the difference between these three? Hi, I'm Gabrielle, a CPA and tax expert. Today, I'll be diving into the three commonly used business structures in Canada, which are a sole proprietorship, a partnership, and a corporation. Notice that I didn't mention an L LLC, which is actually a business structure that exists and is commonly used in the US, but does not necessarily exist in Canada. So if you want to learn more about your options as a Canadian business owner, make sure to keep on watching. Sole proprietorship. A sole proprietorship is the easiest and inexpensive way to start a business. You don't even need to register your business if you operate under your own legal name, like Jane Doe, for example. However, if you are operating under a different name, such as Jane Doe's Bakery, you do need to go through some extra steps such as a name and business registration. In the eyes of the legal and tax authorities, you and the business are considered the one and the same. There are many elements on whether to consider the different business structures but usually legal and tax are the two main things to consider. From a legal perspective, you are personally liable for all debt in the business as well as if anything goes wrong. So if you get sued from a customer for whatever reason, your personal assets are at risk. Though this is usually something to consider depending on the nature of your business and how risky it is. So for example, manufacturing baby cribs are very high risk compared to let's say landscaping. From a tax perspective, it's reported as part of your individual tax return, so it's simpler to report than the other business structures that we will be mentioning. That's mean all the profits of the business is taxed at your personal income tax rate. If you are making lots of profits, this will be unfavorable since it would be subject to your highest marginal tax rate. However, if you are making losses, you may be able to offset it against other sources of income, such as your employment income, if you work a nine to five. Before we jump into partnerships, if you are finding this video helpful so far, it would really mean a lot to me if you guys hit that like button down below to show me some support. Now moving on to partnerships. There are many different forms of partnerships such as a general partnership, limited partnership, and a limited liability partnership. A general partnership, which is GP for short, is similar to a sole proprietor, but instead of yourself, you have two or more operators. So you and another person pooling your resources for the goal to make a profit. Similar to a sole proprietorship, the partners have unlimited personal liabilities and the action of one partner can legally bind another without prior approval. A partnership agreement would govern how revenue, expenses, and tasks are split among the partners. General partners can be a husband and a wife who are starting a business venture together and are actively involved in the business itself. Limited partners, or LP for short, are different from general partners in that they have a different legal status from its partners. What I mean by this is that there are usually two types of partners in an LP, limited partners and and general partners. Limited partners are typically investors who are not involved in the day-to-day -day operations and their liability is limited to their own investment. Whereas general partners run the business and have unlimited liability. LPs are usually used in real estate developments and in the film industry. Limited liability partnerships, LLP for short, are more similar to a corporation in that the partners have limited liability in that it is capped to their investment amount in the LLP. Usually this structure is used by professionals such as doctors, lawyers, accountants, architects, and engineers. For partnerships in general, they are a flow through entity, meaning that they are itself not subject to tax. Instead, the partner are taxed on their own allocation of income expenses based on the partnership agreement in place. Corporations are the most complicated legal structure in which a business becomes incorporated and is now considered a completely separate legal entity, which means it's different person than you you would have ownership over a corporation as a shareholder. As a small business owner, you would often not only be a shareholder, but an employee as well. From a legal perspective, a corporation provides separation over your personal assets. So if the corporation gets sued, your personal assets are not at risk, but limited to the corporation. Same with debt. If the corporation is not able to pay its debt, creditors can't personally go to you for money. However, there is something called piercing the corporate veil 
jail, where if you conduct fraud, you may be personal liable in that case. Corporations exist forever, so they could continue to operate even after your death. Because of this, other reasons to incorporate include estate planning, where you could pass on your legacy to your kids, or you could grow your company and sell your ownership in the company. Of course, perhaps one of the biggest benefits to incorporation are the reduced tax rates available for small businesses. The tax rates vary depending on the province, but here in BC, the rate is 11% on the first $500,000 of taxable income. There is a lot of advice floating around, even from some professionals, that incorporating is always the way to go because of this tax benefit. However, I want to give you a heads up that this might not necessarily be the way to go and can actually put you in a disadvantage financially if you incorporate too soon. Each person's situation is unique, and in order to better determine if incorporation will actually save you money, there are a couple of factors to consider, such as your income level, such as if you are still working at 9 to 5, how well your business is doing, how much your expenses are, and if you're planning to make any big purchases, how much you need to pay yourself from the business to support your living, etc. Not to mention, there are definitely cons with incorporation, as it's going to be much more costly and more complicated to maintain than a sole proprietorship. There is a higher level of compliance that is required of you from the government and the tax authorities. You need to file annual reports, prepare financial statements, and file corporate tax returns on top of your own personal tax returns. There are also more tax planning considerations to be made since there are two separate entities, you and the company, which means you can't simply withdraw money from the company like you would do in a sole proprietorship. For example, paying yourself a salary versus a dividend will make an impact on how much taxes you pay at the end of the day. There are a ton of things to learn as a business owner, which you could have expected, but it can also be totally overwhelming sometimes. You may have had the dream to be doing what you love, to have a flexible lifestyle so you can live on your own terms, and to be financially free at the end of the day. Let me know in the comment section what your main purpose was in starting your business. Though in order to achieve these things that I mentioned, such as financial freedom and flexibility, it's important to understand not only your own finances, but the finances of your own business which is a lot more complicated. This is especially the case if you don't have a background in business, accounting, tax, or finances. This may all be too much for you. That is normal and totally understandable. I noticed when I first started my accounting and tax practice, many business owners were having trouble with navigating just this. So I decided to make a program called Path to Profits, specifically designed for service-based businesses, such as consultants, content creators, and coaches, which I have personal experience with, to walk you through what you need to do as a business owner in Canada to become money savvy. While it's important to be focused on what you are good at and running your business, Every single entrepreneur has to know how to be profitable so the business can continue to operate and fund your lifestyle. If you want to learn more about the program, I will be linking it down below. It will be a tight-knit community with very limited space in the program, so make sure to be on the waitlist so you can be given first priority. If this video gave you more clarity on the different business structures in Canada, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more videos like this. If you want to learn more about my entrepreneurial journey, make sure to check out more videos here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.